everyone. It's working. Good evening. Charlotte here from Enriching Environments for Top Tip Tuesday. On Tuesday the 9th of November here in Dubai and thank you so much for joining me this evening. Those who are coming on, let's just wait a few moments. Hi Nada, let's just wait a few moments while um, people come on. Hi there Phoenix Film. And this evening we're going to be talking about what seems to be a really popular topic because I've had so many, hi Gracie, I've had so many messages about um, this, uh, this topic since I posted it, uh, I think it was two days ago. It seems like um, this topic of, of puppets and, and teddies and, uh, and uh, stuffed animals seems to be a one that people are really interested in. So. Um, I'm glad that I chose it. Uh, talking about it, hi, baby learning steps. I've been talking about it with a colleague recently, and then I've been using this a lot with some, as I said in my post, or sorry, in my story, a challenge that Harry's been having with a really close friend. So it's, um, as with all of my lives, they're very personal and close to me and what's happening and what I'm uh, dealing with. Um, with uh, with my own children and so um, yeah I wanted to share this with you this evening and before we begin I'm going to introduce a couple of Olivia and Harry's favorites this is Sloth who's Olivia's favorite this is Tiger who's Harry's favorite he's got a leash on he's used for a lot of pretend play um, and obviously of course once I finish the live I'm going to give them back and the puppets I have are ooh, where are they here two really simple puppets one, this one, this is from the UK, a friend gave us a little simple puppet. And this one my sister gave us, it's a beautiful hand embroidered one from Lao. It's really gorgeous. But yeah, they don't need to be any, the reason for me showing you this, they don't need to be any specific style or type of teddy or dolly or what have you. It's really just um, something that your child really likes. Harry loves tigers, Olivia loves sloths, and those puppets were gifts and they just appeal to the children straight away. So there's no, um, there's no hard and fast rule about when you're choosing teddies, things like that. Something that ap appeals to your child and obviously is in line with your principles um, of, the, of the family. So for example, if and when I talk about principles or values, so for Olivia and Harry, if they chose um, a teddy in a shop that uh, did um, branded character or a superhero or something like that, or a princess, that wouldn't be something that I would buy because that's not the values of our home. But anything else, you know, is if they're interested in it, then then of course, then and it's something they're going to build this emotional bond with, then um, then I'm more than comfortable with that. <clears throat> So let's talk about the emotional bond and let's talk about why puppets and teddies and stuffed animals are so um, invaluable actually, invaluable tool to support our children with emotional development. This isn't the only way we support our children with emotional development, um, there are lots of different ways but this evening we're just going to focus on this and um, if your child is a child who likes teddies, puppets, that type of stuffed um, animal and, and pretend play with that, then this is gonna really come um, in handy for them. And then you can see a couple of the ways in which you can use, um, use them to support your child in difficult situations. I'll first talk about the benefits in terms of emotional development, and then um, I'll go into two examples I have of where I've used them with Olivia and Harry that I think might be useful. Um, so, uh, emotional development and why are they so beneficial so your child's teddy is will probably be um, their first friend you know their first uh, friend that they will share things with that they'll want to do things with that they'll want to feed and change and clothe and and chat to so it's all part of um, emotional social language development also, of course, play, as we know, has so many benefits, so it provides cognitive benefits as well. But it's, um, you know, we start seeing real play in terms of pretend play around the 18 months to two year mark, depending on the child. And I really noticed with Olivia um, that she would start uh, using her teddies, lining them up and using them and talking to them and having them interact with each other from about the age of two onwards. That's when I really saw that. But I have a client who um, 
recently has noticed her child doing this, and he is only 18 months. So it can occur any any time in that in that period. Um, but with Olivia, it was really sweet. We would go to the library for story time. This is when she was little. She's now almost seven. She'll be seven in four weeks' time. Um, and, and we would come back from the library, and then she would replay the whole of story time by lining up her teddies, and she would repeat the same things that Louise, the storyteller, she'd say this to her teddies, she'd read them a book, and so that was when I really first saw her using, uh, she used to cuddle her teddy before at night, but this is when I first started her using teddies to make sense of her world, to really understand what she'd seen, what she'd experienced in story time, gaining her own self-confidence by practicing um, that public public speaking, as it were. And what's interesting for you, for you to know is a bit of background is Olivia, until about the age of four, four and a half, was a very, very reserved child. She was always called shy whenever she went. Everyone was like, oh, why is she not smiling? What's wrong with her? She's too shy. She's too attached to you. All those judgments that came. And we, when we go to story time, when we go to any social situation, she... Um, she would sit a little away from me. She didn't need to be necessarily on my lap. She would sit a little bit away from me, but she didn't engage in story time. She wouldn't sing. She wouldn't do any reading. She wouldn't stand up and join in all of the things. Hi, everyone who's joining. So um, she was definitely a, a, a reserved child, what would be called a... She was judged as a shy child. And it was so interesting is that when we came back home and she would be replaying everything that was happening in story time, with her teddies and and it was really beautiful to watch that and it was so lovely to see those magical moments and that unfold for her and you can actually see the emotional development happening in real time when she used the teddies so um that would be one of the first benefits of the, of teddies of stuffed animals is um it's your child's first companion it's who they first share their things with it's for who they first feed it's her, how they first um start to understand social dynamics and um, secondly it's great for language development because they're just even if they're having a nonsense conversation a conversation that you or I can't understand it's de developing their language they're chatting 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 to their teddy so it's it's all positive um, from the language development side um, it's the child's fur is your child's first friend hi Sam um, and then the third thing as we've touched on already imagination and role play um, it is, you'll see when your child starts becoming really affectionate with teddies, is all of this imagination comes out, whatever is um, in their hearts, in their minds, in their bodies, everything is played out in the interaction with the teddies, and the interaction that the teddies have with each other, um, and it's so powerful to see that, and it's so powerful to uh, be part of that, and to witness that with our child, so um, Moving on to, so that's touched on a few of the reasons why uh, teddies can be invaluable. And of course, like everything, every child's different. Some children love teddies or dollies or puppets and love that type of interaction and play. And if your child doesn't, that's fine too. There'll be another way. There's lots and lots of ways of developing emotional development. Um, for me, I've really seen how my children have really, really enjoyed, uh, love, still love teddies and still with sleep with the teddy every night you know Olivia's almost seven um, but for your child that might be different and that's okay too this is just one tool and a beautiful range of tools we have for emotional development um, so we've talked about the, the benefits of uh, for your child and let's now talk about um, how we can use them as parents to um, in role plays uh, playing out acting out role plays with our child to help them either um, deal, not deal with, not the right word, manage and be able to cope in challenging situations that they find themselves in, or, which are a normal part of childhood. So that's one area we can help them um, understand others' behaviours and we can help them advocate for themselves in challenging situations. And the second way is that we can help them support them in modifying their own behavior perhaps they're displaying some um hi harry uh, perhaps they're behave displaying some behavior which is challenging which is undesirable and we can use teddies to address these issues address these behaviors but in a really non-judgmental in a non-shaming in a non-confrontational -confront way let me take a sip of my tea 
and then I'll be right back. Um, so for when we're using Tebbies for, for role play, either for help, helping children modify, understand, supporting their behavior, or for um, helping them to respond or advocate for themselves in challenging situations. Um, this, let's just touch on three reasons why role play with teddies is really effective. Firstly, we're telling a story and the story, they may or may not make any connection towards the, between the story being told and themselves, but that doesn't matter. Children love stories, they love hearing stories, they love um, watching stories, and the fact that you're playing it out with puppies or teddies is so powerful. They love this. It seems, um, it can seem when we're getting used to this, you know, a bit forced or even a bit embarrassing, you know, if we're getting two teddies to talk to each other. Um, but trust me, it's really, really valuable for them and they absolutely love it. All children love stories and as much as there is a huge, huge value in reading books every day, of course, just telling a story um, through the medium of two teddies, like this, just having them talk to each other, is of huge, huge value, emotional and social and language and cognitive, all of those are so powerful for a young child. And it sticks in their brain because um, it's really fun and it's really playful. It creates this positive memory in the um, emotional start part of the brain where emotions are stored uh, in the amygdala. That is where um, we can really create positive emotional memories. So um, hi there, everyone who's joining. So this is why it's so important to keep these role plays really, really light, really, really playful. And then the third point I'd like to touch on, as I said, there's many more. The third point of why it's so beneficial doing this role play in this way is it gives our child the opp opportunity to see something through a different lens. Um, of course, as we know, young children are egocentric, which means they um, are not able to see the world through a different lens. They're not able to see the world through a different through different eyes. That is something that develops between the age of uh, three and six, two and a half and six, and this is a, gra uh, a gradual process. Um, there's the Three Mountains task, which was um, created by a psychologist called Jean Piaget, who was a Swiss, uh, a Swiss educator. He was a student of Dr. Montessori, actually, and a huge advocate for the Montessori method. And he um, invented this, uh, he did this research, he invented this test to see, uh, to prove that children could not see things from um, someone else's uh, perspective. So if you Google uh, Piaget, that's P-I-A-G-E-T, Three Mountains Task, you'll see the explanation to that. And it was groundbreaking at the time, and it showed us that children are, little children are not able to see things from someone else's perspective. It's a skill that develops and we support them in that, but it's a, it's a particular element of brain development that comes between the age of two and a half, three and six years old. So um, <clears throat> what work with teddies and puppets does is that it activates this part of the brain and supports and exercises that muscle. You know, everything that we're doing in the early years is really exercising um, that muscle, sort of switching on, um, creating neural pathways, all of those things. So these are the building blocks that over time, these little things, you know, doing one role play per week with teddies for our children, you know, five minutes is gonna make a huge impression on them. It's not something that we need to be super disciplined and write it on list and make sure we do it every day. Just these little pockets of um, role play, usually spontaneous and fun, are, are the most effective, are the most valuable for our children. So um, let's talk about role play with teddies or puppets for challenging behavior. And I'll give you the example of Olivia and um, one of the uh, Olivia and one of the original members of Enriching Environments. This must be two years, maybe even two and a half years ago. And there was a situation where during Enriching Environments, Olivia was the eldest, and she had realized that one of the younger children, Hani, um, didn't like water being poured on him, and everyone else did, but Hani didn't like it. Olivia 
must have been dealing with something emotionally at that time herself. And so she kept on provoking Harney by pouring water on him. He would obviously get quite upset. And she kept on provoking and provoking. And um, obviously I tried to stop as much as I could during the sessions. But I decided that what I would do instead is then approach it at bedtime. It's really good to approach um, stories and things we want to talk about in uh, bedtime because our children are naturally going into the dream state. It's more powerful, as we know, you know, things like meditation, affirmations, it's much more powerful at nighttime um, when our brain is going into the dream state, when our brain waves are moving into delta, it accesses the subconscious mind and it's much more powerful for our children and of course for us. So that evening I set my intention that when we were settling down to bed, they had their pajamas on, and we're settling down, as I said, uh, I want to tell you the story of two teddies. And I talked through how one teddy um, was being really, really playful and was pouring water on the other teddy and the other teddy didn't like it and would cry every time but the other teddy found it really really funny and so I talked through all of these things and just narrated the story of what had happened with Harney and Olivia and didn't mention any names and after a couple of minutes and I made it fun and playful and after a couple of minutes um, Olivia said oh that's what I'm doing to Harney I keep pouring water on him and he doesn't like it, does he? And I was like, oh, that's interesting. This is what these two teddies are doing. What's most interesting about this is at no stage did I, I didn't actually get to the stage in the role play that I was heading for. I was heading for explaining that the other teddy didn't like it and, and you could tell from his body language, that's what like, the point I'd got to. And I was going to get to the stage that the teddy doing the water pouring shouldn't be doing doing that because it wasn't kind. And I was going, I was leading up to sort of specifically giving guidance to Olivia of what she should be doing differently. And what's really interesting is once she realised that the scenario was similar to her and Harney, she said it out loud. She said, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore because that teddy's getting upset with water being poured on him. That's what I'm doing to Harney. I'm not going to do it anymore. And I was like, oh, okay. And I just took it at that and thought, that's really interesting. She's got the hang of it. I haven't told her what she should or shouldn't be doing. I've just set out this scenario and shown that the other teddy's upset um, and left it at that. And amazingly, she never did it again. And what's really powerful with this, and this shows us how when we can really access something that's fun and playful and leaves a positive um, emotional footprint um, imprint in our child's brain is just a couple of weeks ago um, she asked for the story of the two teddies where one was pouring water on the other one and that was as a two two and a half years ago so that was really really fascinating that she remembered that and she loved that story she said oh that's what I used to do to Harney when I was younger so it's really really powerful Excuse me, <clears throat> my tea's gone down the wrong way, so <clears throat> I hope I'm not going to be coughing too much for the next couple of minutes. Um, so that's how we can deal with it. Hi, Savani. Um, that's how we can deal with it for challenging behavior. And now looking at um, the situation that I've had with my son, um, recently with Harry. Recently he um, is having a tough time with a friend who um, has who himself is having some issues, so he's showing quite a bit of aggression once he's with Harry, when he's with other children on play dates and things. So um, it's a challenging situation, and Harry is a child where he's, uh, he's when he's at home and he's out and about in nature, he's super boisterous and playful and venturous and, and, and I would say, confident and then when he's in an environment that he's not particularly familiar with or he's in a play date or he's at school he would be much more reserved he would keep himself to himself he wouldn't want to socialize uh, excuse me <clears throat> i think i'm going to keep coughing and so um he acts very behaves differently, very differently at home to what he does in other other scenarios, 
And so the scenario here is that um, this child is, is, has got his own issues and is hurting Harry and hurting other children. And um, the way that I've been dealing with it is taking the two puppets, taking the two teddies, and um, one showing that one teddy is being aggressive to the other one, and then speaking from the other teddy's point of perspective, how they would advocate for themselves, how they would say, I don't like that, that's not kind. I don't like that. I don't like it when you hurt me. I don't like it. Um, when that happens, I want to work with you instead. I want to find something to play uh, with you instead. I like it when you're calm. So I'm giving Harry all of, and Olivia, because she's listening to, all of this language that he can use to advocate for himself. And it's not that he doesn't like this child. He loves this child. He loves playing with this child and being with this child when he's calm. He even said to me, I love playing with him when he's calm, but I don't like it when he hurts me, and I don't like it when he hurts other people. And so I'm, through the medium of the teddy, his favorite teddy, his red panda, who he's sleeping with at the moment, I'm giving Harry the language, ways of advocating for himself. It's worth noting that I, we've said this in conversation, we've practiced this in a role play between us, between Harry, Olivia, and I. However, what has been most effective is using this role play with the teddies. This has really, really changed it for him. And there's been a definite shift in the way that he advocates for himself with Olivia and in other scenarios with other friends and with this friend. And I've really noticed this huge um, sort of swell in confidence at him be able to say, I don't like that, let's do something else. Um, one of the things that I, I did start with when uh, he first uh, was saying that he was being hurt by this other child, this other child was hurting, I said, oh, well, you could go and speak to an adult. You can go and tell an adult and, and, then, and then they'll help you. And I noticed he didn't want to do that. He was really, really reluctant to do that. And um, it was a colleague of mine, actually, when we were on a call, she, I was asking her advice about it. And she said, well, Maybe she recognises, maybe Harry recognises that this other child is having a hard time and speaking to an adult isn't actually going to help. So what we need to do is empower Harry to tell this child, essentially, I really like you and I want to play with you, but you need to be calm. I don't like it when I hurt you. And this, of course, is an opportunity for Harry to find his voice. But the methods I was using before, the normal role play that I'd use in between us, and um, the different ways of expressing feelings, the ways of expressing feelings in our body and releasing feelings in our body, my usual tools weren't working. This, using the teddies, the sloth and uh, red panda, this is, it's a tiger, but I used red panda and Olivia's uh, sloth. Um, using those, one being the child who's being aggressive and the other one being Harry, but not saying that, um, and saying things like, uh, I would narrate what's happening. I would acknowledge that it was hurtful. So uh, the teddy that was Harry would say, I don't like that. Um, that scares me when you shout at me or I don't like it when you hurt me. That hurts when you pinch me. Using all of this language. And then um, another teddy would come in and would say to the Harry teddy, oh, uh, I wonder if you need a government cuddle. Can I help you? Do you need a drink of water? And then when both teddies had a different perspective. They would then say to the teddy, who was meant to be the child being aggressive, would say, do you need some support? I wonder if you're having a hard time today. What can I do to help? How can I help you be calm? What can we play with calmly together? So no one's receiving any blame. Children understand very subtly but powerfully that the way that someone else behaves is not to do with them. The way that someone else behaves is always, um, if someone treats us unkindly, it's because how they're feeling about themselves, not because we've done something. And so it's really, really important and powerful for our children that they can understand this. And um, telling the story with teddies or puppets just works so well. It depersonalizes that child's experience, whether they are the one with the challenging behavior or they're experiencing challenging behavior it's so much easier for a child to hear this and internalize and understand it if we 
if we um, depersonalize it for them. They don't feel any judgment, they don't feel any blame, they don't feel any shame. Um, and it's something which is used a lot in play therapy, actually, um, as well, to express feelings. And what can be really powerful is when you've done the role play that you want to, you can invite your child to sort of um, take over one of the teddies and invite them to share their feelings. You could get one of another teddy or one of your teddies and say, okay, I'm going to tell you how I feel about this. This is how it feels in my body when dot, dot, dot happens. And, um, and I've used it for these two examples for challenging behavior from others or from your own child. But this can be used in so many scenarios. And this effect of having one step between our child and ourselves enables us, allows us, is so powerful, it allows us to give our child um, that gift of having a bit of a, a gap. There isn't the pressure on them to express their feelings to us. There isn't the pressure on them to answer or perform or behave in a certain way. This is the story of two teddies, one of which is having a hard time and the other one is feeling that hard time. This is the story of two teddies who've had a disagreement and they don't know how to resolve it. So they're having a discussion about it and they're expressing how they feel. Um, it's hugely valuable for us to be able to just practice this as we go along. We're not going to get it right first time. We might feel a little bit uncomfortable, but see how you get on. Um, ask me any questions. DM me with any questions as ever. And um, the puppets, the simpler the better. Um, definitely try and keep away from um, characters or princesses or anything like that, simply because they already have, um, you know, an image or characteristics or a personality sort of laid onto them by the, per the marketing person who's selling it to us. So something which is neutral in terms of um, no other expectations of how they should be behaving. And the teddy can be angry one day and sad another day and happy another day. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to cover for this. Let me have a sip of tea and if anyone would like to type any questions or like further guidance, you can let me know. I think we're all good for questions. So to round up for this evening, thank you for joining me everyone. To round up for this evening, um, teddies are great uh, when our child starts doing pretend play with them from the age of around 18 months onwards, depending on the child. They're a great companion, they're our child's first friend. They're great for language development and imagination and role play. And then what's really powerful is it can really support them in managing their own uh, behavior if they're going through a tough time and support them in when they're having experiencing challenging behavior with a friend or someone else and also in our own family situations if there's something going on if their brother or sister's having a hard time if someone in the family's having a hard time explaining that through a teddy is really um, so useful again it depersonalizes the experience it allows the child to um, zoom out and see it from a different perspective um, unconsciously and um, it's a it's a safe space for the for the child to express themselves and it's and it's um, them seeing emotions and feelings and explanations of feelings in a really non-pressured way so Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you've enjoyed this one. This will go on my feed as always. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to DM me and um, check out my episode eight from the Montessori Mission, which was released last week. Episode nine is coming very, very shortly toward the end of this week. And until then, until next week, I look forward to hearing from you. Take care. Have a great week. Bye-bye.